This video is about how to use the online reaction time tester. First of all, you'll notice there are three different modes, anticipated events, random events, and synchronized. So we'll do random events. You'll notice when you choose a mode, then it, this little dialog pops up and tells you. So we're testing random event reaction time. This reaction time tester is modeled on the in-lab reaction time tester in that there are three spaces here with a green background. You notice there's a start button and a stop button. So first of all, we're doing random events. So what will happen is when we press start, after a random amount of time, all three of these will be filled in red. When they're filled in, we want to press the stop button, and the reaction timer will then tell us the amount of time that elapsed from when they all came on to when we press the stop button. So here's an example. There we go. So that was 380 milliseconds. You notice it's probably best if after you press the start button, you move your mouse over the stop button so that you're right ready to press the stop button as soon as it stops. So here we'll do another example. And that was 652 nanoseconds, milliseconds, sorry. Now, one other thing that I'll point out is you notice there's two stop buttons. There's a stop press and a stop release. We can also do, we start when we start it, that then we hold down the stop button, and when we release the stop button, that counts as a stop. So here's an example of that. 298 milliseconds. This allows us to test, for instance, by comparing these two, whether doing it when we when we stop with a press or a release, if that makes any difference in reaction time. So that's how random times work. For anticipated events, they work much the way they do in the in-lab reaction timer. Now when we press start, before all three of them come on, first one will come on, and then the second, and then the third, and finally all three will come on, the delay between each step in that sequence will be whatever is given down here. So, in this case, 500 milliseconds. So here we go. So I have a time of 47 milliseconds. We can do another example. 198 milliseconds. Again, like with the random one, we can use the release instead. 338 milliseconds, and so on. Now, the one thing that's different about this reaction timer from the in-lab one is now we have the possibility for synchronized events. In this case, you use the keyboard to go through the sequence and the start and the stop, use the mouse. So here we go for an example. <coughs> so when I press start, nothing happens, but now I can press a key. Each time I press a key, it moves a step in the sequence, and so I have a time of 263 milliseconds. So if one person is pressing the keys to go through the sequence and the other person is using the mouse, then you can find how well these two people can synchronize with each other. That's how the reaction timer works.